We're here at the National Firearms Museum with senior curator Phil Schreier. Time for another edition of the Curator's Corner. And Phil, now this gun looks a little bit older than, uh, than the, what we might see at a gun store uh, or a gun show on, a, on an average weekend. It is, Kim. Thanks again for having us on the show this evening. Uh, this, in fact, is a very well-worn and used Colt 1851 Navy revolver. It's uh, in 36 caliber. Uh, it was uh, Colt's basically his first real popular gun. And there were over 200,000 of these made in just a short period of time. And it's the, the last of the, uh, the Colt Navy models before Colt gets into the cartridge era. This is still what they call a cap and ball. You put a percussion cap on here, you load gunpowder through there, you use this little lever to pack the powder and ball on top of each other. It was uh, possibly the most singularly popular revolver of the war between the states, or as those Yankees are called, the, the Civil War. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tremendously important uh, development in Colt's history. He's got a firearm that's actually light, manageable to be carried by an individual, whereas other previous revolvers, the Dragoons and the Walkers were like horse pistols. You almost needed to have those in saddlebags. This you could actually wear on your purse. Uh, and it was a hugely popular gun during the American Civil War. The neat thing about this particular gun is that it belonged to the possibly one of the most notorious gunmen of the Old West, John Wesley Harden. Really? Yeah. All right, tell us, for, for those who may have heard that name but don't know a whole lot about uh, Hardin's story. Tell us about uh, John Wesley Hardin. John Wesley Hardin uh, is one of the most notorious outlaws and killers of the Old West. Uh, he was born in 1853 and lived until uh, 1895. Uh, by his account, he killed over 44 men. Uh, and uh, he, he was uh, once literally run out of town or backed out of town uh, by Wild Bill Hickok. Uh, the marshal in Deadwood. He thought that he would uh, he, he best leave town after a few incidents uh, running in with him. There's a, uh, a story where he, he once shot a man for snoring too loud, which is actually in fact true. He was in a, uh, a, you know, one of those old shack type motel hotels uh, back then and uh, the walls were paper thin. And sure enough, the guy in the next room was snoring so loud it was keeping him awake. Uh, so he pulled out his revolver and aimed the gun uh, just above where this guy was sleeping so that, uh, that the impact would hit a dresser or mirror on the other side of the room and wake the guy up and get him to stop snoring. Well, he shot twice. The first shot woke the guy up. The guy sat up in bed and the second shot killed him. Had he stayed laying flat in bed and didn't wake up, he'd still, be, still have been alive, but uh, Harden accidentally killed him uh, for snoring, technically. Wow. Now, you, you said this is a cap and ball revolver, uh, and, and we don't, I don't normally think of cap and balls being used in the, in the Old West. Uh, was this a gun that Harden actually used in the 1880s and the 1890s? Absolutely. Uh, you know, back then, uh, there was a, a great transition from self-contained metallic cartridges uh, from the old cap and ball method. Uh, you had guys that had been used to uh, percussion caps, gunpowder, and lead balls. You can make your own lead balls over a campfire. You can buy a tin of a couple hundred caps and keep them in your vest pocket. Uh, that, that was easy. Powder was available almost anywhere at that time. Cartridges, if you were riding out west, you know, it's like the last stop for gas for the next hundred miles. You may not find 4440 cartridges until to Abilene, you know. So a lot of guys preferred the cap ball because they know they could make it work anywhere they want it, you know, we're going to be. You also got to remember that the real advent of cartridge, you know, revolvers for Colt at least, wasn't until 1873 with the introduction of the, uh, the Peacemaker. But it was years before numbers of those got to be sufficient that they were actually you know, prevalent throughout the Old West. A lot of these guys coming back from the Civil War kept their sidearms. Uh, it was written into the, uh, you know, the terms of the surrender. And uh, you know, these guns you know, stayed with them for, for years, if not decades, after the war. 
Now, Samuel Colt's uh, first patent on a revolver was 1836, right? right? So how, how much had changed from the 1836 uh, patent design to what we see here in the 1851 Navy? Well, between 36 and 51, uh, Colt starts off kind of small, gets really big with the Walker, which weighs in at four pounds, nine ounces, and then shrinks down to the, uh, you know, to the 36 Navy. And then right in the eve of the Civil War, possibly one of the most beautifully designed uh, revolvers in history, the 1860 Army Colt in 44 calibers designed and developed. And that, that truly is one of the most popular guns of the, uh, of the Civil War because of its uh, style and, and caliber. This is a 36 caliber. Uh, Colt had a factory in Connecticut, and he also built one in London, England uh, to make this model gun uh, and actually tried to sell these in the European market as well. Uh, so it was, it was very practical. The uh, biggest difference between, say, a Patterson and a, and a 51 Navy is most Pattersons were like 31 caliber, 36 at the most. Uh, this has a trigger guard. The Patterson had a, a, a fall down trigger. So there, th this has a permanent trigger with a guard on it. Uh, and the loading lever is actually attached to the gun, which wasn't a feature that, that appeared until late on the Patterson revolvers. And now, is this gun on display here at the National Firearms Museum? It is indeed. It's a, uh, it's a loan to us, uh, and it's on, on exhibit in the Guns West uh, exhibit in the William B. Ruger Gallery here at the National Firearms Museum through the end of 2009. All right. Tell us uh, again the hours for the National Firearms Museum. National Firearms Museum is open from uh, 9.30 uh, to 5, uh, Sunday through Friday. And then Saturdays were open late to 7.30. Phil Schreier, thank you so much, sir, for another edition of the Curator's Corner. Thank you, Ken.